Okay, welcome back. So we've got the other spindle out of this VF0E machine that I've scrapped. There's the spindle. Now we've got all the other parts laid out over here. You can see we've got a ton of spares. I even took all the linear rails off. So we've got obviously the X is the longest ones and the Y and the Z are actually the same length. I took the motor casings or the uh, coupler casings. I've got all three motors, bearings um, and couplers. We've got the spindle motor, contactors, got the table, um, transformer, electrical cables, fans, P call, TRP setup. And over there we've got some electronics and we've got the tool change plate, weight covers, we've got everything. Basically everything has come off that machine and there's loads there that I can use as spares in future. Hopefully I won't need too many spares, too many breakdowns, but there's not much left to the machine. See what I'll just show you out here. There she is, she's stripped. So we took everything out of the electrical cabinet. There's the head on the floor. The saddle's been unbolted, but it's just resting. This is the front sheet metal. There's the pendant arm across there. The front of the base. That was part of the tool changer, but you're never really gonna break that plate, so I left it with it. And obviously you can see all the rails have been taken off. Everything, she stripped bare, so that's gonna be weighed into the scrap there. And just in case I ever bang up a panel in future, I have actually kept the outer sheet metal panels, just in case. Still got the other table here from the other VF, um, which not from the VF0E to be fair, it was from one I just bought with spares, so it might make a good little fixture table or a welding table. And these are the ball screws off the machine, X, Y and Z, all good ball screws. So yeah, plenty of spares there, and at some point I've got to go through that and tidy it up, because the only things that I've really cleaned and tidied are the bits that I don't want to go rusty, because the weather was bad, and obviously the machine was out in some snow um, before I got the rails off, so I've cleaned them up, and they're going to be WD-40'd, oiled up or whatever, and then they'll be wrapped up and put to one side. So anyway, back to the spindle. Now, <coughs> other than the holes in the top of this, which I'm guessing are for balancing, because um, these two are to jack the pulley off, like you saw in my other video, when I disassembled the other spindle. And these ones, I'm guessing, are gonna be for set screws, for balancing. Now, this is really nice, silky smooth. Um, so that side of it feels really good. The actual, can't see too much there, the dogs of the spindle look good. You can see there's even a bit of oil in there. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it back on the press exactly like I did with the other one, and we're gonna take the drawbar out of it, and I'll lay it out and we'll see what that's like, because I already know that the drawbar from the VF3 spindle, as you see in the last video, if you watch that one, if you haven't, go back and have a look at the uh, removal of the VF3 spindle, you'll see the drawbar was really, really good condition. Now, if this one isn't, I believe it will be, but if it isn't, um, I will put that drawbar into here because they're exactly the same part number etc so off camera i'm going to remove the drawbar because i don't want to show you that again when you've recently just seen it in a previous video if you haven't seen it go back and look at that video but i'll get the drawbar out we'll put it on the bench and i'll bring you back in a minute okay so we've removed the drawbar from the spindle now this one's a little bit more awkward to get out i actually tried tapping it through with a mallet like i did on the original vf3 spindle drawbar and it didn't want to come out so I had to turn the spindle over put it in the press and just lightly press it out um, so here's the two drawbars now this one at the front is the one I've just taken out of this good spindle hopefully good spindle from the 2000 or 2001 VF0E this one at the back is the good drawbar from the VF3 spindle now a couple of differences are picked up on straight away this VF0E only has four balls for the retention stud, like the pull stud. Whereas the one off the VF3 has five. The one off the VF3 also has two O-ring grooves at the lower part of the bar here, but this one doesn't. 
They've both got an O-ring groove for an O-ring at the top. Now this one didn't have an O-ring fitted, the VF0E, and obviously no O-rings at the bottom. This one had the two O-rings from the bottom and it had the O-ring fitted on the top. Now all the washers on the VF31 were good. You can look around them all, none of them are broken. So we knew that was looking pretty good. The one off the VF0E, multiple washers are cracked. So you can see there's a crack, 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 crack. There's loads of them. Loads of them are gone. You can see there, keep turning it round. They're just broken in numerous places. I think there's, I think I counted them up and there's about 26 different broken washers. There's 81, I think they're Belleville washers, whatever they're called on here, 81 on there, 81 on there. They've both got these five little, um, five little shims down here. Same there, I don't know if these have got different um, compression ratings, I have no idea. But yeah, this one's only got four balls, this one uses five balls. With the O-rings and the good washers, I'm gonna put that one back into this spindle. Lengthwise, they are one millimetre difference. Now I don't know, so if you line them up at the top, you can just see it down there. Now I don't know if that's gonna make a difference, can't see it because that's just gonna, it's always gonna pull the stud up to a point, so that should be fine. If there's any issue with that, then obviously I'll find out when I put the drawbar into the spindle, put it in the press and put the tool in to put the circlet back in. So if there's an issue with these two drawbars not being interchangeable, then I will find that out when I put it in the press and I go to reinstall it before we're actually in the machine. So if needs be, I will have to order a drawbar, but hopefully not. Um, maybe this is why this one was difficult to get out because it was cracked. There was also no grease on this one. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with the fact that there's no O-ring on the top, maybe stopping stuff getting in, um, and drying out the grease, because obviously there's no coolant or anything going through this bit or up there shouldn't be. So it's only whatever comes on top of there. And this is pretty much well hidden. So you could get like dust and dirt ingress through there, which could potentially dry out the grease, I suppose, over time. But that's about it. So what I'll do is I'll get this greased up, this one, get the balls put back in it, put the O-rings back on, and we'll clean up the spindle, inside of the spindle, and I'll get it reinstalled, and then we'll trial fit putting the tool in. I'll bring it back and show you if it looks like it's all seated properly. See you in a sec. Okay, so we've sorted the drawbar out, we've greased it all up. Now this is the one with the five ball bearings out of the VF3 that wasn't in this spindle originally. So, like I said, they're the same length bar about a millimetre. Now I did find one cracked washer on this one. I'll try and come around here because that's just balancing, you see? This very end one. Now, time sensitive, I'm gonna get this fitted back in, I'm gonna run with it. What I'll do in the future is I'll strip this off and I'll nick a good washer out of there. Um, but I need to make a little tool up to compress this because these have got like, um, like the locking collets you get on car valves, like cylinder head valves there, like spring collet. So I'll look at that. It has got one cracked washer, so I'll sort that out at a late date. Every other one is good. So we put the five balls back in and we've blobbed a load of grease in there to make sure they can't fall out. Uh, we've greased up the rest of it. We've cleaned the inside of the spindle there. You're not really gonna see too much, but that's all cleaned up as good as it's gonna get. Now, what I'll do, I just wanted to show you this all cleaned and greased up. Now I'm gonna put the camera down because I've got a brand new phone, don't wanna get it caked. I'll turn this upside down. We'll lower it in there because I need to make sure I'm careful when the balls don't fall out. And then what I can do is get it back in there with the tool in it to put our spring back on the top. So once it's all back together, I'll, um, I'll bring you back. Okay, so we've got the drawbar back in and the circlip is fitted back in the rear of it. 
Now the only thing you want to check when the draw bar's gone back in is that you've still got the five balls in there and they've not fallen out. So it gives you a bit of a view there of the taper of this one. It's actually pretty good. Nice and smooth, nice finish to it. So I don't think there's any issues there. And this one really does spin nice and smooth. It feels really good. So we're confident. So the draw bar's back in. If I just spin this round a little bit. This one has got the tiny little oil filter, which I'm probably not gonna get focused on there. Can't really see, see it in there. Not the best of camera shots, but it is pretty clean, so I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, I'll just show you this end, if I can spin it around. Carefully with one hand, so I don't drop the whole assembly on the floor. That we've got the clip for the drawbar fitted back in there now. The clip that originally come off this one, here, if you look how bent up it is, I think this wasn't actually sitting properly in the recess. Hence why it's gone completely concave. Looks more like one of the Belleville washers. So, um, yeah, we sat that one off. Obviously that can be replaced when this drawbar is redone. So that's there. It's time to get it back in the machine. Okay, so we've got the spindle back on the side and it's ready. We just put some grease around the O-ring just to lube that up. Now, so we've got everything in place and we're ready to go. We've just cleaned up the oil fitting there, which goes in the top of the spindle here. But that can't be put in until the spindle's in place because if not, it won't fit through the recess. On this spindle, that's a 7 16 um, spanner. And then the actual fitting which goes in with the air oil mist line is just, oh, I'm not sure if that's a 7 16 as well. And it's got a little knurled section so you can screw the first bit in by hand. Now I've got the spindle bunks on the vise. And what I wanna make sure first off, because it'd be easy to forget, is I'm just gonna rotate it. So I've got the section at the front. Now I marked this before it come out the other mill, but also you'll know the oil fitting is gonna come out, if you were looking directly down, the oil fitting's gonna come out about two o'clock. So it's aiming the right way to come out the casting. And then also on these um, spindles, you're not gonna see, there's two small tapped holes, which are always gonna be on the right hand side for the anti-rotation blocks and adapters and stuff you can put on there. So. You're not going to see it, but there's two small tap holes here. So you want to make sure it goes back in, in that orientation. And then I've got my six bolts there. Just double check I've got the right ones. Yep, yeah, there for there. And I'll go and get an Allen key. I didn't pre-plan this bit very well, did I? Um, size is it for these? This is 5 sixteenths for the socket cap heads to actually hold the spindle into the machine. So I'm gonna put them in my pocket so I don't have to lean down for them. Now the machine's powered up. Because um, everything's disconnected, all your tall unclamp sensors and clamp sensors are disconnected. When you power on, you're gonna get an alarm. Um, but if you just press your reset, clear all the alarms you can, it will still say tall unclamped. But if you do um, zero return, X, Y, Z, and I've got A axis on here, and zero single axis, one at a time, once that's done, even though it hasn't done your tall home and everything, it will let you jog the table around and everything as normal. So we're good to jog the machine about. I'll just quickly show you. I've got the camera on the stand, so I'm just gonna pick the stand up and try and climb up without falling over. So we've cleaned up the surfaces here, and you'll see in there, we've just cleaned around the rim of everything and around the bottom one, 
So should be nice and smooth. Now this hole here is an oil fill hole. So you'll notice that this recess um, or these two machined bores, then you've got the, the main casting section, which is recessed slightly bigger. Now what you're meant to do is fill this hole with oil um, so it creates an oil cavity between the spindle housing and the casting housing. I didn't know what that was for, but evidently that's to help um, dissipate heat from the spindle into the casting. And then obviously um, around the casting, through this section, oh sorry, camera just completely fell over there. Through this section, you have the coolant fills up around here, almost like a water jacket around that section, also to help cool. So that's something that personally I didn't know about. I don't know about you guys. So right, we've got everything there. Try and get a bit steadier. Now I know this isn't the best view, but you're gonna get the idea. So everything's in place and what we're gonna start doing is just carefully jogging down to the right height. Not get too close. And as we come down, we need to make sure that we're lined up because the last thing you want to do is hit and jog the casting into the pulley of the spindle. Now you want to come down until you're really close. And I've got a bit of wiggle room on the, on the vice here so I can see where I'm at. So I need to go forward with it. Loads to go there, and I need to go across a bit. Okay, so I'm going to come down now. Right, so that's over the pulley. Obviously, the pulley and the oiler ring has got a lot more clearance than the actual spindle itself. So just keep. Check in, I actually want to come back this way a little bit. It'd be easy if you had two of you. Right. So you can do it with one. Now I'm getting right onto the actual spindle housing. Just over the top bit of the housing, and then just want to make sure everything's okay there. Nothing's binding, and it should be all good to come down. So carry on jogging down. Just move our bits and pieces out of the way there. Now all I'm going to take it to is, just need to go past the O-ring. So the O-ring is now touching, but it's still loose. It's not, not tightened up yet. What I want to do is just get it aligned enough to start getting the cap heads in there. Can't quite see. 
and I must be off rotation ever so slightly, so it's going to get a mirror and my torch and have a little look where I'm at. Okay, so I need to rotate slightly. Now I'm alive properly. Now you know you're good if you can rotate the cap heads by hand. Obviously you shouldn't have to be forcing anything at this moment in time. I'll tell you one thing I might check first actually. raise the belt right back up. But I'll be able to lift it up. Just want to make sure they're not trapped in the way of anything, which they're not. Now, when you start aligning the spindle, as in the tram on the table, there was no shins between this spindle housing and this casting when I took the other spindle off. Now that's not to say it won't need shins or it couldn't benefit from having the shins in there to help um, get the tram and the spindle sweep correct, but I'm gonna worry about that later because if you do need to do that, you'll just have to back the cap heads off. You wouldn't need to take the belts off. You could just back the cap heads off give the spindle a tap so it drops down a bit, put your shim in and tighten it back up. So it never had any when I took it out and I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, I think I was within pretty much give or take 0 0.02, 0 0.02 millimeters when I done the table sweep before. Now I'm going to make sure I've at least got a decent amount of thread in the cap heads because you don't want to start lifting it up to find out you're only on half a thread and it's going to fall out. Now this bit's a bit boring, a bit long winded, but you know my videos, I do like to show you most of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jog this back up. You see now with the spindle attached. And this is just so I can see these cap heads easier. And know that everything's aligned. And then I'll tighten them up bit by bit on each one, just so they're even. So I haven't, I haven't knit these back to yet. Right, okay, so we are now in there with everything. I'll jog that back down. Actually, let's take the camera out and let's just go around and just show you. So as you can see there, 
we've only nipped the bolts up, hand tight. I'll see what the torque's meant to be on on the torque spec, and we can do that afterwards. Obviously, the spindle still turns nice and freely. There's no issues there. So we'll jog it back down. Um, tell you what, tell a lie. Let's just jog it to about there because it's easier for me to stand on the machine and show you here. So I've now got to get back in here, just down, you can see where my finger is down here, to put the oil fitting back into the collar, which again, is coming out this angle here, so it meets up with this casting hole. There's the oil line there, and I'll get that screwed back on. And the other thing I need to do, I need to loosen the six gearbox bolts that hold that in place. Um, put a little bit of wood under there so it can't tilt forward, and I need to pull it forward to get the belts back over the pulley. So putting the belts on and putting that oil fitting in is uh, nothing exciting. So what I'll do is I'll do that now off camera and I'll bring you back. I'll get the tool release piston assembly back on and I'll bring you back when we can clear the alarms on the machine for the tool clamp and um, do a full power up restart. And then maybe we can have a look at actually running her up. When I took the spindle out of here, there was no oil in that cavity. Um, that little fill hole down there. And I haven't got anything I don't think to get in there right now. So I might try and run it up first off without that um, because there wasn't oil in there with the last spindle. So I can't see it being too detrimental. Um, if it was designed like that, it's probably good to have the oil in there in general. But at the moment, I'm not gonna worry about that. So I'll bring you back when she's all connected and we'll see what she sounds like. Fingers crossed. Okay, so we put the tool release piston assembly back in. Um, we've plumbed in, very simple. You've just got your small airline for your pre-charge, your main airline, um, the solenoid connector at the back, and then you've got your clamp and unclamp switches. So this side is your tool clamped. This side will be your unclamped. Um, we've not fully talked this up yet. And obviously it hasn't been running to have oil fed to it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show them, we're gonna run it in a minute. It's a, uh, will be our first time running. I've not heard it. I hope it sounds good. I thought I won't cheat and um, run it before you guys see it with me. If it sounds terrible, we're gonna hear it together. But what I will do is, this is the airline which feeds off the back. Um, if I can just try and show you here so it feeds off of this line here and this is basically like the drip feed for the spindle oil now what i will do is i'm gonna disconnect this and i'll take a syringe and i'll just put a syringe a syringe full of oil uh, only a small syringe but i'll put a syringe full of oil into this line so that straight off the cuff, I know that that spindle, because I don't know how long that's not been run for. I know I looked at that machine about six months ago, and I know they've had it sitting there for about six months. So I'm guessing this spindle was not turned under its own steam properly with oil feeding to it for probably a year. Um, so the last thing I want to do is go, yeah, it works perfect, straight in, 6,000 RPM, et cetera, et cetera. And also I want to check it. Once I'm happy, I'll take the TRP setup off again. And because it's meant to be there, I will fill that cavity with oil. If it's meant to keep the spindle cool and help dissipate heat, I'd rather have it um, filled with oil. Every little help save the spindle. So right, we've got no tool home still. Now there shouldn't be any issue with tool height, but there will be an issue with um, tool change so i'm not going to do that yet because if i go right let's turn the emergency stop off and if i go mdi um, spindle orientate you can see we're miles out because we've had the belts off of the pulley so i'm going to redo that but i'm not going to worry yet and i will make sure i don't do a tool change you shouldn't hit anything like that anyway because there's no tools in there but i will check that um, and redo that later so 
If we, um, obviously it orientates nicely, so we know it moves. Now I've done the belt tension. Last time I did this, when I redone the uh, gearbox, I done the belts too tight, first of all. So let's just go M3 S. Let's play it real safe. I know it sounds ridiculous to do 25 RPM. So I don't know what gear we're in. What gear are we in? Sound can't right, we're in high gear, so. 25 should change to low gear, and then 25 RPM. Okay, <laughs> now we're never gonna hear the spindle bearings like that, but when I do that syringe full of oil, I'll run it at probably 100 RPM or 50 RPM for three or four hours tomorrow. So it's feeding oil until I get oil coming out of the spindle nose. So, let's just not go too mad, let's go. S250. And with these gearbox machines, it's hard to hear because them fans are so noisy. But obviously, seems good. You have to run it a bit faster just to um, be able to hear it. S500. Sounds good at 500 RPM. Thousand. Still sounds good. Showing a little bit of load bounce on the meter there. Fifteen hundred. Okay, so that's now gone into high gear. Now uh, you can see it's showing a ten percent load. Now what that tells me, because I've had this before, and that will increase as the RPM increases, uh, that the belts are slightly too tight. Um, but just to play it safe, I'm going to stop it there. Just turn that off for the minute. Um, I'm not going to go any further. What I'll do is I'll end this section here and I'll come back and finish the video with one more piece tomorrow. I'll make sure we're drip feeding a nice amount of oil to that spindle and I will get the um, tool orientation reset because again, I don't want to run it up hard until I know that it's got a good oil feed. I will actually check the oil. Um, I put a joiner in there when I needed to remove this line before. So I'll disconnect that, put a bottle here, and I'll run it for three or four hours in the morning um, just to make sure that it's getting oil all the way up to here. If it goes to that fitting, then we know it's gonna to go to the spindle. So that'll be fine. Um, so yeah, let me get everything done, spindle orientation, check the oil, get oil to the bearings, and then we'll bring you back when we've redone it and we're ready to go properly. Okay, so welcome back. Apologies for the noise, um, but we're running the spindle on the new machine. Now, we've checked it's getting oil, and it is, so we're happy to run the spindle warm up. And we've got a tool loaded in, just a plate tool. And we're near the end of my spindle warm up, so we're currently 4,500 RPM. So it's not going to be running for much longer. But you can see the oil's played out there now. This probably was a bit too much oil to start with because I used a syringe, as I mentioned before, and I injected oil into the main line down here that comes from this bit wary. And then you've got the metering unit up there. Now we're set on here should be 17 psi it's just crept up a little bit so this should be set to 17 psi it says which it is and while i was there i actually replaced this line because um i cut it and put a join in it that i mentioned before 
and I didn't have the correct fitting and that joint was weeping a little bit. So, we've now replaced this line completely. And I don't think you're gonna be able to see. But there is actually oil moving through that line. I can just about see it with my eye. Um, so yeah, we've got a new line down there. Obviously into the back of the spindle back there. Everything's connected back up. And it's obviously noisy, we've got the covers off for the fan. Now, we're not running too hot. Just lukewarm to the touch. And again, that's 4,500 RPM. Now I haven't yet filled with oil that cavity because I didn't want to use the decent oil that I put in the um, lube system. I wanted something a bit cheaper. So I'll get some cheaper oil in the next couple of days. And to be fair, there wasn't any oil in that when I removed this spindle. But when I removed, um, sorry, when I removed the original spindle, there was no oil in this machine. But when I removed this spindle, from the VF0E and dropped it down, it was full of oil. And I didn't realise, and as I opened it up, well, like oil went everywhere, all down the arms and all over the show. So I will fill that with oil when I get a second and I managed to pick up just any old cheap oil. But currently, it seems good, it's going good. We'll let it do the spindle warm up. I'm happy with everything so far, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these covers all back on. And then next video, I'll bring you back and, uh, We'll put a part in the machine and we'll see how it cuts, see how it sounds. So yeah, cheers for watching, see you again soon. Okay, so we're gonna do a test cut now with this. Now we've got the spindle in there. Um, just being a little bit rushed, I haven't done the tram on the spindle. I will do the tram on the spindle, we'll sweep the table and we'll work that out because we've got the vice mounted on there. I wanna do a test piece. Now, I don't know if you see one of the videos before, but this was the test piece. You can see the floor there of this pocket. It's lovely and smooth, but all them tool marks, same around the outside. Now I'm guessing that's because on the last spindle, it was bouncing up and down. Um, the threads, threads are actually not too bad. So basically I've programmed this exact piece again, not changed anything, no speeds, no feeds, no nothing. And we are gonna cut the same piece. Now we've got the spindle out of the vf 0 e and we're going to compare them. So yeah, let's start doing that now. I haven't put the covers on, but what I'm going to do is just use this coolant setup, um, which should do fine really for what we want. That will stop it splashing so much back up there, but I don't want to put the covers on until I'm happy with everything. Probably not going to be the best. We've got coolant on the camera. Yeah, this program's about eight minutes long, so we'll leave it running like this. Currently sounds good. Um, yeah, we'll leave it running like this and I'll bring you back to show you the part at the end.
Okay, so I wanted to show you the next bit on this video because uh, as you've seen before, the problem with the spindle, when it was drilling, you heard it going, uh, uh, and you can see the spindle moving. So we are now gonna, it's just spot drill, but it wouldn't have made a noise doing the spot drilling. So now we're gonna come in with a five mil drill and we'll see what it sounds like. Exactly how it should sound. Now that is much better. Much better. Now we've got a bit of tapping. I still think I've got the belt too tight because we're showing about 15% load there and it shouldn't be. I'm also getting a bit of tool sticking so I'm going to check the um, tool release piston, the heights and the switches afterwards. We'll run this one for now because you don't want that tool sticking because that plate in there is brand spanking new. Last thing I want to do is break that. But yeah, we'll let this bit run. I'll bring you back to show you the end result. Okay, so the part's just finished. Let's open her up, have a look. The other thing I want to do is... I've got to check the spindles when we get too warm. 27 degrees. The tool's at 20. So I don't think that's too hot to be fair. Um, it's just warm to the touch. Most of that program is 6,500 RPM. Um, so yeah, I think that's okay. Feels good. We haven't got the oil in the cavity yet either, so that might help bring it down a bit. But let's have a look at the part. That was pocket was done with a 6mm mil with 0.5mm step overs just going out and out and out. That's really nice and smooth. And you can see there's a bit more mark on the top face, but that might be because the head's not trammed in. Uh, obviously we haven't checked that. We've got our tapped holes. We 
we've got a little bit better finish around the outside so let's compare it to this one so there's definitely an improvement obviously these are big heavy cuts and that's where it would have had the issue with the spindle moving up and down so these aren't anything too drastic but we've definitely got the machine where we want it i think in the sense of being usable again i'm happy with that that spindle will do for now we're going to keep running it as we are i might just adjust the belt tension a little bit so i can get the load off of here because um this one's just doing a spindle warm-up but i bet you at 4500 rpm that doesn't really move um i'll have to wait and keep an eye on that but yeah that's it you've got the spindle in from the bfcre buying that spares machine really done me a favor because we got the vector drive for it uh, as a spare which is brilliant which we've had prepared so i've now got one vector drive spare between the two machines and unknowingly at the time when that spindle failed um so it didn't fail as such it was already knackered when i got it but when that spindle went out it turns out that we could use the one off the vf 0 e because they are the same so yeah there we go I'm gonna leave that video there for now cheers for watching please like and subscribe if you like the content we'll see you again soon